Thank you, Sarah. The Woman Who Saved Thanksgiving by Laurie Halsey Anderson and illustrated by Matt Faulkner. Thank you, Sarah. There we go. Our title page has a different illustration. And the dedication page says, To Alyssa Eisner, who knows a good idea when she sees one, from the author and the illustrator for my nieces and nephews, Isabella, Sydney, Becky, Jordan, Clancy, Casey, Keith, and Fletcher. You think you know everything about Thanksgiving, don't you? How the Native Americans saved the pilgrims from starving. How the pilgrims held a big feast to celebrate and say thank you, turkey, pumpkin pie, cranberries, the works. Well, listen. I have a newsflash. We almost lost Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving canceled. No football today. Didn't know that, did you? It's true. Way, way back when skirts were long and hats were tall, Thanksgiving was fading away. Sure, the folks up in New England celebrated it. They'd roast a turkey and invite the relatives when the harvest came in, but not in the South, not in the West, not even in the mid-Atlantic states. More and more people ignored the holiday. Thanksgiving was in trouble. It needed help. It needed a superhero. No, not that kind. Thanksgiving needed a real superhero, someone bold and brave and stubborn and smart. Thanksgiving needed Sarah Hale. Now, I know what you're thinking. She doesn't look like a superhero. She looks like a dainty little lady. Never underestimate dainty little ladies. Sarah Hale was every inch a superhero. Not only did she fight for Thanksgiving, she fought for playgrounds for kids, schools for girls, and historical monuments for everyone. She argued against spanking, pie for breakfast, doll stories, corsets, and bloomers and bustles, and very serious things like slavery. As if it weren't enough, she raised five children, wrote poetry, children's books, novels, and biographies, was the first female magazine editor in America, published great American authors like Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and Edgar Allan Poe, and composed Mary Had a Little Lamb. How did she do all of those things? She was bold, brave, stubborn, and smart. And Sarah Hale had a secret weapon. A pen. When Sarah saw something she didn't like, she picked up her pen and wrote about it. She wrote letters, she wrote articles, she wrote and wrote and wrote until she persuaded people to make the world a better place. Nothing stopped Sarah. Sarah Hale loved Thanksgiving. She wanted the whole country to celebrate it on the same day. When folks started to ignore Thanksgiving, well, that just curdled her gravy. It's Thanksgiving. Do you know where your turkey is? She picked up her pen. Sarah wrote letters, thousands of letters, asking politicians to make Thanksgiving a national holiday. She wrote magazine articles asking her readers for help. The women of America listened. They put down their babies, their hoes, their skillets, and their washing. They picked up their pens and wrote. When the letters arrived, the politicians listened too. One by one, the states officially made Thanksgiving a holiday. But that wasn't good enough. Sarah Hale wanted the whole country to celebrate together like a family. So she went to the top. She went to the state house. Looks like. um, Sarah wrote to the president himself, Zachary Taylor. He refused. Did that stop Sarah? No, she waited for the next election and wrote to the new president, Millard Fillmore. He said no, too. Did that stop Sarah? No, she was bold, brave, stubborn, and smart. Sarah wrote to the next president, Franklin Pierce. Wouldn't a national day of Thanksgiving be wonderful? No, Pierce grumped. 
Sarah penned an elegant letter to President James Buchanan. She gave all the reasons why America would be better off if everyone gathered the fourth Thursday in November to give thanks. President Buchanan disagreed. He had other things on his mind. Abolition, no slavery, union, states' rights, se secession, pro-slavery. So there are people on two different sides of an argument that he had his mind on. Sarah felt like the stuffing had been kicked out of her. Everything was going wrong. America was at war, the North against the South. States had promised to celebrate Thanksgiving, then changed their minds. The country was falling apart. It was a bleak, scary time in the United States. Did that stop Sarah? No, no way. Nothing stopped Sarah. Superheroes work the hardest when things get tough. She picked up her mighty pen and wrote another letter, this time to President Abraham Lincoln. America needed Thanksgiving now more than ever. A holiday wouldn't stop the war, but it could help bring the country together. She signed the letter, folded it, and slid it into an envelope. She wrote Mr. Lincoln's name and address on the envelope and stuck on a stamp. She mailed the letter. She waited and waited. And then, looks like he got her letter. Lincoln said yes. Lincoln said yes. The nation gives thanks. In 1863, President Lincoln made Thanksgiving a national holiday, a day for all Americans to give thanks together. It took Sarah Hale 38 years, thousands of letters, and countless bottles of ink, but she did it. Nothing stopped Sarah, that bold, brave, stubborn, and smart lady saying Thanksgiving for all of us. 38 years. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> and that big balloon from the parade says, way to go, Sarah. All right. And then here's some facts. Do you want to hear them about this? A feast of facts, tradition preserved. The Thanksgiving we celebrate today is based on the harvest feast held by the pilgrims in 1621. But the pilgrims did not invent Thanksgiving. Celebrations of Thanksgiving have been held all over the world for centuries. Good stock. Historians believe that the first European Thanksgiving in North America took place on the coast of Florida in 1513. Spanish explorer Juan Ponce de Leon declared the Day of Thanks after successfully crossing the Atlantic. On May 23, 1541, another explorer from Spain, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, held a Thanksgiving service in Texas. Several other days of Thanksgiving were celebrated in the South and Southwest in the 1500s and along the Atlantic coast in the early 1600s. By the mid 1600s, the colonists of New England were holding annual harvest festivals. These festivals were derived from the Pilgrim's Thanksgiving. The crops were in, the storehouses were full, and the community was ready for winter. Each community decided for itself when Thanksgiving would be held. Everything depended on the weather and the timing of the harvest. During the Revolutionary War, the Continental Congress declared seven days of Thanksgiving. These were religious days of prayer, not family gatherings or feasts. In 1789, President George Washington issued a national proclamation that declared the last Thursday in November a day of Thanksgiving and prayer. When Sarah Hale lobbied for the revitalization of the holiday, she used the date chosen by Washington. Every president after Lincoln continued the tradition of declaring the fourth Thursday in November to be Thanksgiving. Every president until Franklin Delano Roosevelt. In 1939, America was suffering from the Great Depression. Millions of people were out of work. A group of business owners, the National Retail Dry Goods Association, asked President Roosevelt to lengthen the holiday shopping season by moving Thanksgiving up one week. Roosevelt agreed. In 1939 and 1940, Thanksgiving was held on the third Thursday in November. People were outraged. The country split down the middle about what they called Franksgiving. 23 states went along with Roosevelt. 23 states refused and celebrated instead on the traditional date. Two states, Colorado and Texas, celebrated on both Thursdays. By the spring of 1941, Roosevelt announced that the experiment had failed. Despite a longer shopping season, holiday sales had not increased. Congress passed a joint resolution declaring once and for all that Thanksgiving would be celebrated on the fourth Thursday in November. Roosevelt signed that bill into law. Thanksgiving was finally safe. Extra helpings, football, and parades. 
Football was played on Thanksgiving Day for the first time in the 1870s. It quickly became a tradition, particularly for Ivy League teams. By the 1890s, the Princeton-Yale game was attracting crowds of 40,000 spectators. Within five years, there were more than 5,000 Thanksgiving Day football games being played by high school and college teams. Church services were moved earlier in the day to accommodate the sports fans. In 1893, a newspaper editorial declared, Thanksgiving Day is no longer a solemn festival to God for mercies given. It is a holiday granted by the state and the nation to see a game of football. The first Macy's Parade took place in 1924. It was organized by store employees and had floats, fans, and animals from the Central Park Zoo. The first helium balloons were carried in the parade in 1927. For many families, watching Thanksgiving Day parades is as much a part of celebrating the holiday as turkey and pumpkin pie. Vintage America, 1863. Mail is delivered free of charge for the first time in large cities. When Johnny Comes Marching Home, composed by Patrick and Gilmore, a.k.a. Lewis Lambert, the first breakfast cereal called Granola is invented by Dr. James Caleb Jackson. Roller skates invented by James Plumpton become very popular. Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Caddy Stanton from the National Women's Loyal League to collect signatures for the adoption of the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery. Um, here's some more. Um, oh, there's a lot of different ones. All right. I'm just going to read the last days. I want to talk about Sarah a little bit in the last few minutes. Um, by the time she was 75, Sarah was working from her home. She continued to edit the magazine and write a steady stream of books and articles until her retirement in 1877, when she was 89 years old. She wrote to her readers, and now, having reached my 90th year, I must bid farewell to my countrywomen with the hope that this work of half a century may be blessed. New adventures for higher culture and for good works are opening before them, which 50 years ago were unknown, that they may improve these opportunities and be faithful to their high vocation is my heartfelt prayer. Sarah kept writing letters and poetry until her death on April 30th, 1879. She died in her 90th year, a daughter of the American Revolution who changed the country with her ideas. Sarah Jophia Buell Hale lived in an era when most people treated women as second-class citizens. Women couldn't vote until 1920, 41 years after Sarah died, yet she was able to influence an entire nation through her writing. Some people think that children have no power because they can't vote. Wrong. Children have a great deal of influence. They can write to newspaper editors and government representatives, petition community leaders, and lobby Congress. Pick up a pen and change the world. Because the pen is mightier than the sword, as Edward Bulwer-Lytton said. So that was, thank you, Sarah.